in the last <clears throat> in the last podcast um this is where we ended up we were solving for a side of a triangle and we solved for x using this equation and i i mentioned that there were two things we can solve for in right triangles although i spelled i probably should put an l in there uh we can solve for right triangles um, the first what we did the other day was if we know a side and an angle we can set up ratios to solve for the other side so we solve for x uh, what i want to show right now is um, the other thing that we can do in triangles but before we do that i want to show you kind of the rest of this problem uh, i on my calculator i i solved this equation and i got x is equal to 6.77, this long decimal, and your calculator will give you this nice, um, pretty precise, but not exact answer. But uh, I recopy this triangle, and I want to mention, so here's here's what x is equal to. It's a little, let's say this 6.77. Write that down over here, too. So it's x is 6.77. Sometimes it's handy to, to actually write right on your uh right on your picture uh, i'm going to call this y here and we can now solve for y using two different methods one it's a right triangle so i can use the pythagorean theorem so six whoops six point seven seven squared plus y squared is equal to 11 squared that gives me y squared equals 11 squared minus 6.77 squared. And y is equal to the square root of that stuff, 0.77 squared. Now, I haven't taught you good calculator techniques, but I will demonstrate some right here. I have that answer on my calculator. And that's supposed to be a squared in there, right? I have this on my calculator. And if I do the square root, parentheses, of 11 11 squared minus, and I'm going to use second answer, and you might not know about this, but on your calculator, the last thing you did on your calculator is stored in a variable called second answer, which you can find on your calculator. So that's going to square that 6.77 long decimal and give me a really accurate answer and that is my my answer and i'm actually going to store that you don't have to remember all this stuff but you should learn it eventually i'm going to store that in alpha y so now that is actually in there i can use that later so i just got 8.67 for y y is equal to 8.67 great but I can also find that same value by using other trig ratios. For example, in this case, if I could do, will you tell me, pause, and tell me what you think, how you would set up to solve for y using cosine. Pause it. OK, did you do that? You should have written down y over 11 is equal to the cosine of 38 degrees. You solve that by doing y is equal to 11 times the cosine of 38. And get out your calculator, move it over there, and you do 11 cosine 38. And you get, hey, same answer. Fancy that. That is great. So I got the exact same value, 8.67, using two different methods. This is how you should be checking things. If you, we had two choices. We could we could find y using using cosine, and then it should be the case that if I find it using cosine, if I plug that y value, if I plug this y value into the Pythagorean theorem, I should get 11 squared, 6.77 squared plus 8.67 squared. And you might have some round off error, but you should get 11 squared or close to it. If, on the other hand, you chose to do the problem using the Pythagorean theorem, you, we could now check this by going um, 8.67 
Let me do this one because this might not be the, that obvious. That is equal to the cosine. That is adjacent over hypotenuse. That's the cosine of 38. Let's check that out on the old calculator. Is 8. Point, I'm not even going to use the exact value. I'm going to use this rounded off thing. That's 8.67 divided by 11. Is that? Is that in fact the cosine of 38 degrees? No. That's because I put in 388 degrees. How about cosine of 38 degrees? Pretty close. Well, it's, it's close, but not exactly because of round off. Um, these are pretty sensitive numbers, so don't round off too much. Don't round things off to the nearest whole number. Round things off like to the hundreds, and you'll still have um, some round off here. Okay, well, here's the next thing we want to talk about is, that's great if we want to find sides, but what if we have a picture like this? Here's the second thing we can do with trig in a right triangle. If we know two sides, we can set up a ratio and use inverse trig functions. What does that mean? Well, let me show you. Uh, let's say I want to find angle A, and I have this triangle. Well, the sine of this angle A is equal to, that's the opposite, over the hypotenuse. Well, that means, that is saying, what angle has a sine ratio of 5 over 8. Okay. Well, there's a... So the way you write that down, the notation for that is to write down the inverse sign. That little negative 1 is not an exponent. It is the notation that means find the inverse. Undo, undo taking the sign. That is what... These mean the same thing. These say the exact same thing. What angle has a sine ratio of 5 eighths? On your calculator, no matter what kind of calculator you have, you'll find probably right above the sign button something that says sin with negative 1 up there. So I do inverse sine. What angle has a sine ratio of 5 eighths? 38.68 degrees. That's an angle in degrees. Let's move that over here so I can see it. That is the angle. Angle A is equal to 38, 38 point, I'm going to round this off to the nearest tenth degree, 38.7 degrees. Okay. 38.7 degrees. Well, there's some other things we can figure out. If I, if I want to know this angle B up here, that would be 90. Angle B is equal to 90 minus 38.7 degrees. That is not too hard to figure out on your calculator. Minus second answer equals 51.3 degrees. So angle B... Angle B is 52.3 degrees. 50, what is it a second? I can't remember what it was. 51.3 degrees. 51.3 degrees. Okay. So this is 51.3 degrees up here. How could I figure out... Uh, this side, this little B, this little side B over here. How could I find, figure that out? So answer that question. How would you do that? Well, there's two ways, right? You can find B, find side little B using Pythagorean theorem. Or you could 
set up ratios. You could do b over 8 equals the cosine of 38.7 degrees. You could do b over 8. If you go and stand an angle b would be the sine of 51.3 degrees. Lots of different ways you could do this and lots of different ways you could check this. Okay, this is what we're going to work on in class tomorrow. But take good notes on these things. One more thing. I would like you to solve the triangle completely and check it. That means find side Y, find angle X, find angle Z, make sure they all work out together. So pause and do that. Okay, you're back and hopefully you, here's what you started to set up. There's lots of different ways you could have done this, so I'm just going to show you one way. I'm going to solve for the angle X first and I'm going to do this by taking the inverse tangent. So each of these has an inverse tangent cosine and sine is equal to X, angle X. Make sure you write good equations to do this. Algebra is your friend. So I'm going to do the inverse tangent of 7 divided by 19. Get that angle. I think I'll store that in alpha x so I can find it later. And I'm going to put that over here. OK, so I found that angle. Angle x is equal to 20.2 degrees. Well, that means I can find angle Z really easy. 90 minus X equals that. Store that in alpha Z. Let's put that down here. And we'll write that down. Angle Z is equal to 90 minus 20.2 degrees, which is equal to 69.8 degrees. That's angle Z. I can solve for Y by doing 7 squared plus 19 squared is equal to Y squared. Is that on my calculator? That is, I'm going to do it. All at once. That's that's seven squared plus nineteen squared, which is equal to. I'm going to store that in alpha y, and I got that twenty point uh, twenty point two units. So now I have y is equal to square root of 19 squared minus, sorry, plus 20 squared, I'm, plus, I'm sorry, plus 7 squared, y is equal to 20.2. That's, that's y. Now, I should be able to, let's just do one little check. Here's a check. Uh, it should be that 19 divided by y, 20.2, that should equal what? The cosine of x, cosine of 20.2 degrees. Let's see if that works, and let's use stored values to do it. 19 divided by, where is that stored? That's in alpha y. Got that, 0.938. What's the cosine of angle X? Same. And when I use stored values, they came out exactly the same. That means all these numbers that I came up with, that and that and that. I'm pretty sure those are good solutions. Okay, hope this helped and we'll practice this.